Hello. Is Birdie coming in? Hello. Can I go to the No? Okay. Yeah, you do. <laughs> yeah, you do. This is Boomer. <laughs> He's our cockatiel. As you can probably tell, we don't film with him because he gets super excited and noisy. <laughs> Hello. What's wrong? Yeah, I know. <laughs> you want to go take him back? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Bye, Boomer. He's happy. Bye, Boomer. <laughs> Hey everyone, so welcome to part two of our giant book haul. Yeah! We have got another... 19. 19 books for you. We <laughs> will definitely try to be more succinct and <laughs> concise. concise. After we said in the intro last time, <laughs> we're not going to talk much. It was a half an hour video, so... <laughs> we're going to try and keep it brief. Yes. <laughs> brief? Brief. Brief? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, let's get started. First up, we have English Animals by Laura Kay. Yeah. This book I have been trying to get hold of for quite a while <laughs> and randomly came across it in uh, a place called Basement Books um, in Central Station here in Sydney. It's a, it's a book that, it's a bookstore that, um, that has all books with uh, little, can you see the They little, have like imperfections yeah, from printing. Like tiny little imperfections like yeah. black marks or, you know, bent covers or things yeah. like that. Uh, but they're perfectly fine, they just have a little cosmetic issue with them. Yeah. So I randomly came across it when I was uh, coming home from school one day. And um, this one is about, um, it's like a small English town, countryside type setting. And we've got a woman who comes to stay with a family or a couple, I can't remember. It's a couple I believe, yeah. And um, the couple are starting a new taxidermy business. Sorry, the birds outside are really, really loud. So and the cat is scratching in his catching, uh, catching? litter tray, yeah. so there might be some noises in this one. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I've been trying to find this for a long time. It's one that has been um, very highly uh, regarded, so I'm really, really excited to finally get to read this one. Next up we have Wonder, and this is by RJ... Oh, I can never say this last name. Mm. Pol Palacio? Don't know. I have no idea. I'll put it in the <laughs> description box down below. It's fine. Um, but yes, it's called Wonder, and um, there was actually a movie made about it. Uh, again, I watched the movie first before I read the book or realized that it was a book. And thanks to this beautiful face, um, I now have the book. <laughs> um, it is about a child who has facial disfigurement and kind of the bullying that goes with having something like that because he is he's quite young i believe he's under 10 it's in what would that be in america like i have no idea i don't know sorry primary know. school here whatever yeah. that is for you guys over there <laughs> or anywhere where you live um but yes i haven't read it i'm super excited to read it it's got great reviews um and looking at a subject that i'm particularly interested in so yes so now we have if cats disappeared from the world by mm. Genji... Genki. Oh, sorry. Genki... <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Okay, Genki Kawamura. Kawamura. Yeah. So this one I got for Michelle because um, I read um, The Travelling Cat Chronicles um, and got into Japanese fiction <laughs> quite intensely. Yeah. Um, and this one sounded really interesting, so it's um, a guy that's given an opportunity to live longer, but he has to give up something he loves. And so he chooses cats, uh, not knowing that his own cat would die as well. Or disappear Seriously, from the world. when you told me about this book, I was like, okay, yes, Japanese fiction, check, but cats going away, and how sad this guy must be that he didn't realize it would be his cat. Like, I don't want to read it now because <laughs> I'm sad already. <laughs> <laughs> but it just sounds like a really interesting concept. Yeah, it does. Very cool. I will read and it, but <laughs> I'm just yeah. I thought I thought you would like it. I know. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> yes, look for a review because yeah, I'll read it soon. <laughs> well, it's only little. It's very it's small. Yeah. Take long. No. <laughs> we also have another Claire Fuller book in this haul. It's called Our Endless Numbered Days, and Billy bought it for me. 
not realizing that it was the same author, but like based on the back cover that as as yeah, uh, all, the good, all the good things in our last book haul, um, <laughs> which I find quite funny. I kept coming to the bookcase and being like, "Why aren't these together?" <laughs> <laughs> because he didn't realize so I that was interesting <laughs> anyway it sounds like another very interesting book right up my alley like all the good things and i'm just going to quickly read you the synopsis on the back because i quite like it so we have peggy is eight years old when her father takes her to live in a cabin in a remote european forest there he tells her that her mother and the rest of the world are gone now the two of them must scratch a living from the earth trapping squirrels foraging for berries surviving winter as best they can but it is easy to lose your way in the forest, to lose yourself. How long will Peggy believe her father's story? How long can you stay sane when the world is lost? And what happens when you stop believing in everything? That definitely sounds like a book you definitely would like. Definitely a book that I would like. <laughs> you know, a bit weird, a bit dark, a bit like, oh, this sounds tragic. Definitely for me. <laughs> so I'm excited to read this. I think that probably this and the All the Good Things book are going to be the next two that I read, yeah. after the three that I'm currently reading. <laughs> so here we have How To Be Both by Ali Smith. Um, I don't really know a huge amount about this book, mm. but I don't mind because I've heard so much about Ali Smith and I still mm. haven't read any of her books. Yeah, yeah. Like, um, Girl Meets Boy, the, oh, yes. um, yeah, the yeah. Uh, Autumn, Spring, Winter, uh, Quad, what's it called when it's four books? Quad, quad, whatever. Anyway, so <laughs> we I, have brains. I've, <laughs> I've heard a lot about Ali Smith. I yeah. really am excited to to listen to slash read this one. Yeah. Um, it's been compared to Orlando by Virginia Woolf, which I know is about somebody who throughout history is born into all different bodies and uh, so male and female so I think it changed like plays of gender mm. and gender roles or mm. I'm not really sure anyway I'm very excited to read this yeah yeah <laughs> okay we have educated by Tara Westover um, I'm actually currently reading this I'm not very far in I don't read memoirs very often so it's a little different getting through a memoir, memoir than getting through a, a novel. Um, I tend to read them a bit slower. But yes, um, this is Educated by Tara Westover and it's about her life um, growing up with her family who are Mormons. And it's so interesting because I'm only not even a quarter of the way through, but you, the life that she's living, she doesn't have a birth certificate and she's nine. She's never been to school, she's never been to a hospital, so just some really interesting looks at these kind of, um, cult, um, communities. Yeah, communities, yeah. like, the, the kind of things that go into a lot of, like, cult religions, a lot of the elements, is what I'm saying, are coming to light in her perspective, and, um, yeah, it's really fascinating so far. And I'll see how it goes. But and yeah, I think it's pretty new, this one. Yes, yeah, <laughs> it is. Um, so I think it's all about how she is really passionate about ed getting an education. Yes. She basically leaves and and educates herself. And yeah, so you can tell from the very beginning, even though I'm not very far in, that she wants to go. She wants to leave. Um, she just doesn't really know why and she doesn't really know how. Mm. So, um, yes, it seems to be all about her taking charge of her own life. Um, and yes, it seems to be quite a good read so far, and I would recommend that you guys start it too. <laughs> Hopefully I finish it soon. <laughs> <laughs> this is IQ84 by Murakami, yes. very, very famous Japanese author. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we have never ever read his books. No. Um, her sister Sarah absolutely loves him. Yes, or we used to, buy. Still does. Yeah. I think she still likes him. But we buy her like every book that comes out from him. Yeah, <laughs> like every year. And she loves it. <laughs> so uh, yeah, this one I think is um, a retelling or a reinterpretation like a spin on 1984. Um, 1984 yeah. by George Orwell, which I have read. Yes. Um, so. I don't know, it might be interesting. I don't read a lot of dystopian, I find them deeply depressing. Yeah, I, I like dystopian, um, but my experiences with dystopian have been a bit negative most of the time. The books I don't really enjoy, not because they're dystopian, but because of other issues like writing style. 
But um, this was interesting because it was given to us by your aunt, I think. Oh yeah, she yeah. was doing a mass clear out of all the books she didn't want to need yeah, anymore. Yeah, so, so we grabbed it. <laughs> we grabbed it. <laughs> we had The Collector by John Fowles. Um, I've just finished reading this, I think, maybe a week ago. Something mm. like that. Um, so it's going to be coming up in our wrap up, which we'll be filming today. <laughs> will we? Yeah, okay. we will. <laughs> We're on a roll. <laughs> um, yeah, so I've just finished reading this. I don't want to say too much about it. Um, it's about a girl who is taken captive by just a regular man um, that we think is a regular man. Definitely not <laughs> a regular man. Um, it's really interestingly written. Um, and yes, check out the wrap up to know what I think of it. A bit more in depth. So this one is Winter Smith by Terry Pr Pratchett. Um, <laughs> was also one of the ones that my aunt was getting rid of, and so yeah. I took advantage of it and grabbed it <laughs> because we love Terry Pratchett. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so this one, um, I think it's a Tiffany Aiken. One, yes, it is. A story in the Discord it's the series. Third. It's, a, it's the third. It's the third in the third. series. Right. So I'm not going to be reading this one for a while because I have to build up to that. Yeah. I'm reading all of Terry Pratchett in chronological order as they were published. So this will be coming up in a little while. Yeah, I think it's later on, isn't it? Because this was one of his YAs and it wasn't written until a bit later, I believe. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. So yeah, looking forward to that one. <laughs> <laughs> Next up we have Middle March by George Eliot with this beautiful cloth bound cover. Follow us on Instagram, because you'll see all our pretty cloth colours. <laughs> a nice plug there for you. No, um, I wanted to get into more classics, and I think, again, your aunt gifted us this one? No, no, no. 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 I bought that one. I keep getting confused about what's been given to us and what we bought, because Billy does all the buying, so most of the time. <laughs> anyway, um, it's beautiful. It's another classic. I really want to get into more classics. As I said in another video, I kind of started my reading with fantasy. That's what really drew me in, and then I kind of got into some Jane Austen later and things like that. But I haven't gone much past that, and yes, this is going to help me do that. <laughs> it's it's one. I mean, yeah. it's uh, I mean it's redundant to say it's a classic, but it, it's one that I've been wanting to read for a very long time. Yeah. It's my grandmother's favorite classic. She told oh, yeah, me. Oh yeah, yeah. So uh, <laughs> I'm very excited to listen to that. Yeah. I think I think the audio is written. Um, sorry, narrated by Juliet Stevenson, oh, which I'm really excited nice. about because I love her voice. Yeah, well, maybe I'll listen to it, but it, anyway, it will get read yes. either way. <laughs> <laughs> this is Little Women by Louisa May Alcott. Um, again, another <laughs> classic, Cloth Bound, Could Not Resist. Yes. I think I got this for you for yes, Christmas you did. or for birthday. Something, I don't know. <laughs> um, again, because Michelle wanted to read more classics. Uh, I actually spent all of December listening to classic Christmas stories, mm -hmm. and Louisa May Alcott was one of them that had oh yes, I remember short stories. Yeah, it was so great. nice. Oh, it was so fun. So yeah, I, I saw the movie with Winona Ryder like ages ago. So oh yeah, I I'm didn't. Very keen <laughs> to read it to see what it's like. like yeah, what it's like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, continuing on with classics, we have the Odyssey by Homer. Um, I've wanted to read it forever, I think, but I just never got it. Mm. And then Billy bought it, of course. Again, continuing with our classics theme. <laughs> I haven't read it yet, even yeah. though my ancestors are you from are Greek. Ithaca. You are Greek. Greek. <laughs> They're from Ithaca, so really, yeah. uh, it's just required reading. Yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, if you don't know what the Odyssey is about, it's about an Odysseus coming back to Ithaca mm. and his epic long journey traveling through all these different islands and seas and yeah yeah so <laughs> sneak peek there <laughs> <laughs> this is the library book by Susan Orlean mm. um, this is non-fiction it's all about the burning down of the LA library in oh, when was that Sorry. oh god I forgot the date as well hold on a second 70s 86? 80s. Oops. Yeah. So, Over 400,000 uh, books. Yes, got burned. Um, and this is a, an investigation into why and how and what happened and mm. all that kind of thing. And I just saw that I think it's being made into a movie. Ah. So very interesting yeah. to see that and to read this. 
Um, also, I just love this colour. Yeah, it's really beautiful. <laughs> We're uh, a sucker for red. <laughs> secretly, uh, was part of the reason I wanted it. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> we're, we're guilty of pretty book covers. Yes. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Next up we have Bram Stoker's Horror Stories. And um, I think it's quite funny, actually, how we acquired this, because you got it for your birthday mm -hmm. from your brother, right? And, mm -hmm. and sister-in-law. Oh, yeah. And Billy was terrified of Dracula. That I couldn't finish it. <laughs> that he hasn't finished it. And I'm there reading it at night. I love it. It was so good. It was like freaky in a good way. And he's like, no, I can't read it. So that was interesting. But I think we'll have to read it during the day. Yes. Yeah. I, I mean, I absolutely loved it. I just yeah. co literally couldn't sleep because I was freaked out. Yeah. <laughs> so. Um, it's pretty cool, though. It's got like a lot of little stories but they're they're put into categories so supernatural foes murder and revenge love and tragedy so yeah and they have like these cool like illustrated bits mm. that are really nice so we're super excited to own this and also it's just like a really pretty cover i mean like look at this so it's pretty. so nice i wish it wasn't super shiny but i still love it <laughs> really i just shiny. I, like shiny. I like matte <laughs> i love shiny <laughs> <laughs> but yes that's Bram Stoker's Horror Stories. This one is the Bookshop Book by Jen Campbell, uh, who I absolutely love watching yes. on YouTube. Yeah, She's brilliant. we love her. I've got many, many books recommendations from her. Absolutely. A lot of which I've bought for Michelle. <laughs> um, so this is her book uh, about traveling around to all different bookshops. Yeah. Um, and talking about their stories oh god oh what was that oh, oh no <laughs> um destroying uh, your book on camera now jen <laughs> oh, no. so yeah uh i love this this kind of thing yeah traveling around to different libraries bookshops um i'm a sucker for a beautiful bookshop yes yeah, so, so am i yeah, yeah if you haven't so. seen our anniversary bookstore vlog that's our favorite bookstore and it's massive yeah so you can tell we like bookstores. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I think I got this for your birthday. Yes, you did. Finally, something I bought for Billy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next up, we have The Binding by uh, Bridget Collins. And it sounds really lovely. Uh, it's about a guy called Emmett Farmer, who is a farmer. Okay. <laughs> um, and he suddenly receives a letter to become a bookbinding apprentice. And it's got a lot of magical realism in it. Mm -hmm. And it just sounds so nice about making books. Mm -hmm. Like, who wouldn't want to read about that? Mm -hmm. I mean, just, yeah, it sounds really lovely. And again, the cover. Yes, oh that my god, cover. it's so beautiful. I love all the embossing. It's just so nice. And I really like uh, the... Yeah, I uh, really don't like this. Go the little... Yeah. It's uneven pages. I love it. So, it's like, yeah, they're... Can you see that? It yeah. bothers me. I love Billy it. And the French it. flaps <laughs> and the whole thing. Yeah. I just think this so is... So I like the French flaps, but I don't like the uneven pages. But anyway, that's beside the point. So yeah, very excited to read this one. Bought it a little while ago, yeah. so I'm looking forward to get getting uh, getting my hands on that. Yeah, me too. I really <laughs> want to read it. So this one is The Best We Could Do by... I don't know how to pronounce their name. I think it's Tibu. Tibu. I think right. there are, uh, yeah, Vietnamese, it's yeah. a hard language, but yes, <laughs> we'll put it in the description. So this is a graphic novel about a family that moves from Vietnam to America. Um, I'm very interested in immigration stories. Mm. Uh, my family and I, we moved to Australia when I was nine, turning ten, uh, from South Africa. So I find it very interesting, immigration yeah. stories. Yeah, and it, it's, uh, it's apparently quite harrowing, actually, mm. you know, looking at all the kind of complications involved with immigration and where you're going to and yeah mm. but the i mean this cover it's beautiful the and the um, inside is gorgeous i don't know if you can see that very well it would be good up there <laughs> so i'm very excited to read this i don't see a huge amount of uh, immigration stories in graphic novels. No, form, I, don't, so I don't think we I see many at all. I was quite excited about that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, love it. <laughs> so, yeah. Also, we have two Sarah Waters books. This one is The Little Strange. <laughs> <laughs> 
I'm sorry. I knew it was a little stranger, but I was going to say strangler. And my, <laughs> my, my mind was like, stop now. The little strangler. <laughs> oh, you, you little strangler. I'm sorry. The little stranger. And tipping the velvet. <laughs> yeah, so we got given this one again by Billy's aunt and... I think you bought this one. Again, you can tell because it's books. a hard cover. <laughs> basement book. So it's got this tiny little imperfection. Black mark here, but it yeah, but really nothing. But it won't affect the reading. Yeah, the book. good thing about like going to bargain um, bookshops is that they're so cheap, and what's wrong with them is so small. It doesn't like, matter. It doesn't matter. Yeah. It doesn't affect the reading experience at all. I usually feel like. If there's something wrong with the cover, then that's that's an issue for me. But no, but I think the damage depends on how bad. Yeah, of course. But anyway. yes. <laughs> so Sarah Waters, very famous. Yes. Um, we haven't read any yet. No, <laughs> nothing yet. Uh, very much looking forward to getting stuck into it. Stuck into it. <laughs> yeah, we're excited to read um, such a famous author. Everyone's talking about her. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's uh, we're a bit late to the party, but we're here. <laughs> Okay, also in this collection we have some graphic novels, and one of them is The Gigantic Beard That Was Evil by Stephen Collins. Um, the back of this is quite funny and hilarious, so I'm going to read it to you to know what this is about. So it says, The job of the skin is to keep it all in. On the island of here, living's easy, conduct is orderly, lawns are neat, citizens are clean shaven, and Dave is the most fastidious of them all. Dave is bold, but for a single hair. He loves drawing, his desk job, and the bangles. <laughs> the bangles. Um, but, one, but on one fateful day, his life is upended by an unstoppable, yet pretty impressive beard. An offbeat fable worthy of Roald Dahl and Tim Burton, the gigantic beard that was evil is a darkly funny meditation on life, death, and what it means to be different, and a timeless ode to the art of beard maintenance. <laughs> so Billy saw this one day and just was like, yep. Well, Looks good. <laughs> I, I've seen it around for a while, and then Mercedes um, mm. really loved it, so I thought, yep, yeah, now it's time to get that one. Yes, and, and there is a beard here too, so... <laughs> it's not really that evil, but no. we'll see. <laughs> it has time. <laughs> <laughs> so we got uh, Volume 1 and 2 of The Umbrella Academy. Yes! Again, ones that I have been meaning to pick up for a very long time, yeah. and was prompted to pick them up finally because of you know the Netflix show coming out yes which are very very much enjoyed yeah we loved it um so very excited to actually read the the uh, comics novels. Yeah. yeah of course they'll be different as they always are yeah, yeah, yeah and sometimes that bothers me but I think um we'll just have to get over it I'll have to get over it, have to get over it. <laughs> I'm excited. No, I'm pretty excited too and they look they look amazing I really like the art in them it's like super colorful and well that's yeah See, this the art is, is by Gabriel Barr, yes. who um, is an, uh, famous with his brother, Fabio, Fabio Moon. Yes. They're um, Brazilian uh, comic book writers yeah, and artists. Yeah, we have another um, Day graphic Tripper. novel, Dra Day Jello. Tripper by them. Yeah. Jello. And written by Gerard Way of My Chemical Romance, mm -hmm. lead singer. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so, I don't know, I'm just very much excited. Yeah. The show is a huge amount of fun. Oh, yeah. Very excited to get into this graphic novel. Last up, we have The Essex Serpent by Sarah Perry. Yes. This one is a historical fiction novel about um, a widow who moves to a small town mm. country uh, with her son and becomes upset. Oh, well, moves to Essex. Yes, yes a I small believe town so. In Essex. Yeah. Hence the name, <laughs> duh, obviously. Um, <laughs> and becomes a bit obsessed with the folklore of the Essex serpent. Yes. Um, meets some uh, a, a vicar who uh, argues that the cure for hysteria is through faith, mm. while she believes that the science is the answer. Mm. Um, and I think there might be a little relationship between them. Not sure. Um, I've heard a lot about this book. Um, yeah, it's been around recently on BookTube quite a lot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, very excited to to read this one. Mm. Um, again, 
uh, from Basement Books, the bargain bookshop. Um, but I <laughs> we can't find the imperfection. <laughs> I spent a lot of time sifting through and like feeling the book to see if there was anything. Yeah, I didn't see any problems with this one. Nothing obvious. <laughs> um, so then you yeah. get to the last page and it's yeah, like... it's all ripped up. And, and, and you never know what happens in the end. <laughs> Missing the last five pages of the book. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so yeah. Um, that's it. That's our book haul. Um, hopefully, it's not another half hour, but we'll see. Ah, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Let us know if it became more than half an hour, though. <laughs>